Having been inspired by this sermon by Trinity's Rector, Dr. William Lupfer, I am beginning a new series of videos and essays titled, I Choose to Dream, and I am dedicating this first episode to and about him and Trinity. Please savor the highlights of this wonderful and inspiring sermon by the rector he gave on Sunday, February 25th, 2018. It's also potentially a very valuable lesson in the relationship between our words and our deeds. This morning we begin our worship with Scripture using the, some of the passages from Sarah and Abraham. Sarah and Abraham together become an icon of faith for us because they listened to God even when they did not want to hear what God was going to say. Faith as listening to God's voice even when you don't want to hear what God would say, or when you think that would be crazy, as Paul says, right? So we, we look at faith, which is one of our core values, as we look for doors of difficulty, and we see that difficult doors can be opened, and we can uh, uh, see God's beauty there. We look for those doors, and if we're looking at faith, Part of the door is where we're resisting. Where is God speaking to you that you do not want to hear but need to hear? So you're avoiding listening, but you actually need to hear that because that's where God is speaking. Now, the only way to get to that door is by listening. And hearing God's voice in the chatter of many voices. They make is the only way to do that, to hear God's voice among many voices, is to listen carefully and completely. So I ask you, how long, long do you pause after someone speaks? How long do you pause after someone speaks? If you're actually listening to them, you need to listen while they talk and not think, right? You're, you're bringing it in. Then the pause is when you start to think that I wanted to jump in and say something because I wanted credit. I realized my primary impediment to listening was I wanted to show people that I was smart. And so I would jump in quickly. And I noticed a horrible thing when I started to relax and listen. The group was smart. And I, every idea I had, if I just kept quiet, someone else said it. And it was only as we began to slow down and listen that all the wisdom, all the wisdom of the group had a way of coming in. And that's when God speaks. When the whole group and all the wisdom in the hearts there are able to speak and able to listen and think and speak. And the whole group slows down. And the wisdom comes out. And isn't it fun when someone else has your thought and afterwards you go up and you say, I was thinking the same thing. How did you... How did you get there? It becomes a much more interesting conversation than when two or three just dominate. Or they're like me. They want to just, just prove how smart they were. They're a little insecure, whatever it would be. The story about Abraham and Sarah <laughs> was the, the, a door opening to something very difficult for them. They had to take this in. They needed some silence and some pause. You notice with Jesus, when, when something really challenging is in his life, he goes to pray. He goes to listen for God's voice. And he has this rhythm of action 
and then reflection, and action and reflection. Jesus' life models this kind of listening to us. Abraham and Sarah, their relationship shows us this kind of listening. It's a tool, a discipline to use when we face tough challenges or when we face really wonderful opportunities. Trinity is beginning to face some of those challenges and opportunities. Soon we will close Trinity Church here. It's been 71 years since a major renovation has happened. A lot of the systems and the electrical and all that, parts that you can't see, need a lot of work. And so we'll close in early May, and we'll talk about when we reopen. That will be strange, because this service then will go to St. Paul's Chapel, and we will listen to you as we do that. We have to listen to each other, and so we have a defined process to go forward so that we can listen and learn from each other, and we will do that. We will have a very careful process of listening. It was, it was a wonderful uh, cohesion and alignment of our own hopes and dreams and our neighbor's hopes and dreams that can so, be shared with our neighborhood. But how will we do that? There's no little book that tells us. We are being called here at Trinity to go much deeper in our ministries, to reflect who we are, the only way forward will be listening. And so we're called on this day through the Scripture, through Jesus pushing Peter. You see Peter? He had an image of Jesus that was wrong, and he was going to try to force Jesus into that image. How, what did Jesus do? He roared. He called him the devil. He said, listen to me, fella. Listen. Shut your mouth and listen. Jesus can be forceful that way. And we see his anger and his intensity with Peter. So what did Peter do? He listens. But he kept listening and he kept learning. And he was the one who helped build the church. And so the one who doesn't listen to Jesus, who struggles to listen to Jesus, who denies Jesus, Peter and you, and me, we are called to build the church. We will do it one step at a time, one dream at a time, as we open our hearts to each other. And in the voices of each other, we will hear God calling us forward.
So the story about Abraham and Sarah <laughs> was the, the, a door opening to something very difficult for them. They had to take this in. They needed some silence and some pause. You notice with Jesus, when, when something really challenging is in his life, he goes to pray. He goes to listen for God's voice. And he has this rhythm of action and then reflection, and action and reflection. Jesus' life models this kind of listening to us. It's a tool, a discipline to use when we face tough challenges or when we face really wonderful opportunities. Trinity is beginning to face some of those challenges and opportunities. An alignment of our own hopes and dreams and our neighbor's hopes and dreams that can be shared with our neighborhood. But how will we do that? There's no little book that tells us. We are being called here at Trinity to go much deeper in our ministries, to reflect who we are. The only way forward will be listening.